This is the uh, second sub lecture of the technology section. And um, in the last section, we went through the background of how we define technology and how um, to start thinking about uh, mapping out the different parts of technology where we started using a very simple example of a pen. In this lecture, we're going to continue with that exercise, branching out a little bit, thinking about functionality as we continue to list technologies. And then importantly, discuss um, related technologies and competing technologies, something that uh, you need to do when thinking about all the technologies that can affect or that you want to affect a particular application. Surface texture. How do we decide to finish this pen? What about this uh, black plastic cap here? It has uh, one kind of texture to it and the bulk of the pen over here that you feel during writing as another, uh, you know, what is its relationship to performance and, and why and how have I created that particular texture. So I could go on and on here and, and just a few important points, uh, which is why I have made this blue. In general, notice what I was doing when I list the technologies in the pen, even though uh, we're, we're just trying to fill out the technologies in the pen, uh, I'm asking which you know, why is each part the way it is? And what are the alternatives? And, and why is it part of the pen? So this is the kind of thought that is in your head as you go through and look at, at the pen and try to um, think about all the different technologies. We should always be asking, uh, why is it there? Why is it the way it is? Why it's part of the pen? The other thing to realize here is that uh, we are purposely using a very simple example to illustrate the process of, of what you do when you start an innovation process. But the depth and understanding of the technology may require a uh, deep inspection of science. For example, um, you know, here off the top of my head, if I were to make a pen that actually has no ink and I wanted to communicate with a um, a computer and record where I am as I move the stylus around. That is an example, maybe easier for people to, to see that that uh, there's a lot of technology that has to be um, looked at in detail. Now, as we'll show you later in this first pass, understanding incredible detail in each technology is not not that important yet, but uh, some initial depth is required to understand what the technology is and then depending on how the process goes in, in a forward direction as we'll talk about later in these lectures uh, more depth may be uh, needed in particular components that we're listing inside this uh, uh, technology space. Continuing along here I've opened up the pen and you can see indeed it's a it's a fountain pen a disposable fountain pen uh, the snap cap itself, uh, it snaps on. There's other kinds of mechanisms, but uh, uh, it's a purely mechanical one, and it has to be reproducible and done many, many times. So that's another technology in this uh, pen. As I mentioned before, the disposable aspect appears to be a more modern construct for this pen. It can be thrown out because the cost apparently is, is um, low enough cost. They could sell it to me for a price that I would pay and uh, use it for long enough that I don't mind throwing it out. And uh, obviously this disposable feature, a lot of technology had to go in that, uh, you know, parts are, are almost all made from plastic except for that one metal part and the metal part has to be joined to the plastic part and in very high volume uh, perform well and not leak uh, ink everywhere. The ink itself is an important technology in the pen. The uh, types of ink and the new inks that are being developed actually are very proprietary in some cases. HP developed uh, a whole set of inks that uh, it patented for injection printers. So ink in its own right is it requires a, a deep undertaking to understand which inks, what chemical composition perform the best for the particular function that, that we're looking at here, especially fountain versus ballpoint. Obviously, the inks are very different. The mechanism of how, of how it writes. A fountain pen is different from a ballpoint, is different from other kinds of, of, of pens because of the mechanism in which 
the ink is transferred from the, uh, the writing instrument to the surface of whatever you're writing on, which many times is paper, but not always. So the mechanism of what's happening, the process of what's happening at the tip of the pen is, is very important. Storage. The design includes a particular shape, as we mentioned. That shape has to somehow have a reservoir filled with enough ink that the user is happy with that amount of ink and how long it lasts before they either have to, in this case, dispose of it, or in other cases, uh, put a new reservoir of ink. So ink storage, the volume, the type of ink, how fast it's used for the given kind of performance. And then, of course, that leads us to um, the performance itself, the writing performance, how it performs for artists versus an engineer versus common use. Uh, that is why there's such a wide variety of pens, because there's a preference uh, for different uh, types of paper, different types of applications. So in each uh, application, the, the performance can be different. So the, the, the physical parameters that we attach to how this pen works matter, how quickly I can write, what's the density to the line, you know, etc. Besides listing the technologies we see in the pen directly and that we can think of about a particular uh, a previous innovation or future innovation, we also need to think about related and competing technologies because they, they could be employed and used uh, in a future innovation. Or maybe we want to use uh, one of the related technologies or competing technology as we move forward and think about our innovation more carefully. So both from competitive reasons, but also because it may be that we need to use part of that technology as we move forward, uh, we need to look closely at related and competing technologies. So here in this case, again, this is a nice example because we can all relate to it. Another writing instrument, for example, is a pencil. And the technology in the pencil needs to be considered because we never know if that particular related and competing technology could have components in our technology. For example, maybe graphite, which is in the pencil, ends up being an important part of some sort of hybrid ink technology that we want to use in, a, in an artist's um, you know, disposable fountain pen or something. So uh, of course, the same is true for markers, other writing utensils that have different uh, kinds of, of uh, chemicals that are put on the paper, again, for different purposes, but, but something to know and think about. Of course, there's the more directly competing technology. If I have, for example, in this case, a disposable fountain pen, there are non-disposable fine writing instruments that have uh, the upper end of the market, or we presume the upper end of the market. And so these uh, finer pens made out of, of of metal and other more expensive materials. Some even have ceramic uh, in them and, and gold. These kinds of fine instruments uh, need to be understood in the, in the technologies and costs affiliated with them, although we're not worried about costs right now. Just to show you how, if we're looking at the pen world and want to innovate in the pen world, inkless computer pens both passive and active. So a passive one would be, for example, a stylus that I rub on a surface and maybe there's a uh, mechanism for keeping track of where the pen head is on the screen or on a piece of paper and then it's transmitted wirelessly, the location is transmitted wirelessly to the, uh, to the, to the, to the screen. And so these technologies now are used for inputting uh, uh, various uh, drawings or writing directly uh, into, a, uh, into a computer uh, software program. Active uh, inkless computer pens uh, uh, um, include more of the intelligence. So the passive stylus may do it directly through uh, a pressure on the screen itself. But as, as we mentioned before, the wireless one would be transmitting from another surface as it's writing on something else. And that would require a more active um, active management of, of what the pen is doing. 
there are future pen technologies. We've been discussing things that even though disposable fountain pens and inkless computer pens are relatively new, they do exist in the marketplace. And so they're not a new innovation. But as I think about going forward, I want to add elements that may not exist yet. For example, there could be new inks that offer value, whether it's a color or a effect on writing performance, uh, new inks, uh, or it could be for intellectual property reasons, I want to create some, some new inks. And so uh, there could be ink improvements. Related to the inkless computer pens, you can imagine there might be a lot of pen IT information technology, you're kind of crossing over into the computer world. And so there is potential for uh, having a lot of new technology that is related to how the pen communicates with a computer, for example. And then finally, integrating the pen with other products. Uh, the pen itself uh, may have one function like writing, but we may integrate it into other products like a flashlight or a Swiss Army knife or something like that. So even integrating pens with other products would need to be considered. So I hope through this very simple example, we've shown you how to list technologies directly involved with the pen. We've talked about how we should be thinking about as we list them, what their function is, why they're there, and the particular use in the particular pen that, that we have. And then also think about competing technologies and related technologies to fill out our understanding of all these different uh, pen technologies. And then finally, uh, we need to include future components, future pen technologies that could play a role or that we can imagine uh, could play a role. And hopefully we have been able to, to show that. Now, the first step towards our larger innovation model, we want to put all these together in, a, in some sort of graphical way that we use later.